Hi everyone and welcome back to the Gentleman's Talk. Here we are on Friday. F -f 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 Friday! <laughs> I'm just waiting for my friend to join and uh, hopefully we're going to get crack a lack and I've got some catching up to do with the banterman Billy who is imminently inbound. So um, hopefully we're going to get to... Holy, just messaged me. Holy shit! <laughs> I'm like, no waiting, no rest for the wicked. Send to my CV email, mate. Jog on. Done it already. Get on board. <laughs> hope you're okay, though. Hope everyone's well. Um, and, uh, yeah, ready to jump on board. Ready to talk about the gentleman's talk. I've encroached slowly on to um, TikTok now. So uh, just to try and promote this a little bit more on a different social media platform. I know that I spoke openly about this uh, a little while ago. And... Um, you know, I, I kind of mentioned I don't do social media. However, unfortunately, I'm governed by social media. Social media is the only way you're going to promote yourself if you want to get some listeners and get some activity. So I've jumped on to TikTok under the gentleman's talk. I just talk solely about mental health. None of this other bullshit. I don't do it for the fun and get shits and giggles. I just do it to promote a little bit of mental health as an extra little bit. Yo, Billy! Billy's on board! How are you, man? Banter man Billy, how are we, boy? Can you hear me, mate? Can you hear me okay? I can hear, I can you. hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you, mate. Loud and clear. Right. So how are you, buddy? Long time no speak properly. We've. I know we talk, we communicate daily, but... Um, not so much actually listening to, about each other's lives. Well, although I do talk quite actively on my podcast, so you um, actively listen to that. So you probably know still quite a bit about my weeks. Yeah, I haven't listened to the latest one. I think we released it last night. Oh, that's just a. That was just my motivational minute. A little segment I do. Just it's a. It's just a couple of minutes of me just. Um, you know, offering a little bit of an insight into uh, some motivational stories. It's normally I like I like it because it gets me it gives me a little food for thought, um, but it also offers a story with a moral. <laughs> Rog. So uh, it's just a little bit of fun, mate. Just I just enjoy it, and and uh, I did notice that there was quite a bit of active listening on my motivational minutes, and um, I was just intrigued to try and sort of you know get them out there. It's normally just stuff like. Um, you know, it's just like, like for instance, one of them was about uh, KFC and um, and how um, what's his name, Colonel Sanders, was rejected by a thousand and nine different restaurants, and then a thousand and ten he got the yes, and the moral was to persevere. So um, it just it offers just a little bit of fun. It's just a little bit of fun for me to do. How have you been mate, anyway? Mate, that Colonel Sanders, mate, he didn't he didn't actually become successful till he was like sixty five. Yeah, 65 years old is when he started. He, he didn't like his job, hated his job, didn't know what to do. He's He used to make chicken for his family uh, and friends, and they absolutely loved it. And um, he went out to try and sell his recipe, even to the point where when I, look, when I read into the story, he actually tried to um, give his recipe away for free, but just take a small amount from each sale. Um, and a thousand and nine people said no, and it was a thousand and tenth that one that said, "I'll buy your recipe," and that's when KFC was born. You've gone quiet. Okay. I'm here, mate. Can I hear you? I'm here, mate. Are oh, you here? Nice one, mate. So, so how have you been, anyway? Mate, I have been uh, absolutely fantastic, mate. I mean, good. You sound like super positive this morning. Mate, honestly, I just I just can't get over how great I am I've been feeling these last few weeks, mate. Like genuinely content, you know? What what's the key? What's the key? Give me the key to life. People. People. I'm gonna say people, right? Okay. Because so uh this new job that I've started here, um I moved I had to move countries, I had to, you know, start the new job, didn't know yeah. anything about it, blah, blah. And everyone here, the, like the morale is through the roof. Is I it? mean, yeah, everyone's just really, uh, well, or, I don't know. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm looking through rose-tinted glasses. I'm not sure. But it seems that way at the minute. Everyone's really upbeat and and, 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 there's, and there's no arseholes, mate. I haven't, I haven't come across any arseholes. I, I literally I don't believe you. I don't believe yeah, you. I'm lurking about. But, um, so, yeah. so you've been there before, 
and this is yeah. your this is your second time in this jo- in, in this same area, the same country. What third. do you think? Is a, do you think third? Third. Sorry, my apologies. Do you think there's a massive difference from the last time I was here? Yeah. Does has uh, it changed your has it changed your mindset? And I know we are in the honeymoon period. They do say the first six months are the best. It's normally after six months of any relationship, friendship, stroke, working environment, whatever. After six months, you normally get over the honeymoon period, and then you get the reality. Do you think that it's going to subside, or do you are you optimistic? So job wise, I'm going to say let's give it time. I'm sure any job will you know will, will take its toll on you, but I'm. But I'm talking like when I finish work to when I get up in the morning. I'm just feeling great, mate. You're liking you know? it. Because I know that when we last did a podcast and you were over in this country and I had many conversations with you, that you were threaders. You didn't want to get up for work. You didn't want to go to work. And I even said to you there and then, you need to make a change. Because if you're not willing to get up for work and you don't want to go to work, then you need to change. And you've done that. And... Listen to the sound of you. Oh, mate, honestly. I I feel like a change, man. Right, so here's the thing as well, right? So there is a vicious fucking circle, a vicious fucking circle. Um, I I mean, whether or not it's just me, I don't know. But but there's like, uh, you know, when you go to the gym, right? Yeah. You go to the gym um, and, well, in the military, you go to the gym and nine times out of ten, if it's a uh, you know some kind of a lesson, you get beasted, and then you come away from it, and then you go to the gym again, you get beasted to come away from it, right? And so this and that's that's happened that's happened for years. You know I mean, for years and years, that's just the way it goes. Uh, and then it's I suppose it's down to you whether you know how fit you get, and you can go after work, and you can go get fitness and stuff like that, right? But yep. um, so I avoided uh, fitness as much as I can. Like I can pass the basic fitness tests, right? Pass them. But any extra stuff, I just I just hated it, mate, like hated it. And why did I hate it? Because I wasn't very good at it. You know, I, I was never um, really you know, good at running or, or anything like that. I just absolutely hated it. And the more I yeah. avoided it, the less fit I got. So the more I feared going back because I would be so out of shape. It's set, would and you like me uh, now? Yeah. And that's uh, no, you're not that bad, mate. And that that circle just kept, you know, getting vicious and vicious, vicious, and 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 to the to the uh, to the fact that, so like, you know, I would I would happily do anything else. I'm talking anything else just to not go to that gym. Right. So anyway, this so I've started a new fresh, right? You you said to me you got to start a fresh. So from the day I got here, I've said I will not, I will not miss a PT session, right? Good. Unless, unless of course it's um what's it called unless it's of course it's like life or death and i have to do something else right so yeah. will not miss a pt session be going to everyone and, and and have i been enjoying it not at the time not at the time at all i'm sweating i'm getting beasted and that but afterwards i felt good well felt that good. that is but that's the key part people don't realize exercise is not there i mean there's there is some sadistic bastards out there that absolutely love getting beasted and i get that there is more crossfitters there's, yeah there's crossfitters that absolutely beast themselves and they love it and there's people that go and just because they have to and then there's people that go get beasted but the best part about it i always found and the motivation for me is normally trying to find somebody like-minded that will want to do the same you know the same pattern as me has the same goal as me it's very difficult because i like weightlifting and not a lot of people i know like weightlifting um to the extent where i do like to get you know, stupidly big weights. I like to feel that sort of endorphin rush, but it's the after effect I love. It's the exactly I just said that it's the adrenaline, the endorphins, the fact that you feel like you can, you don't feel guilty about going and having a biscuit or whatever because you think I'm, I'm, I'm earning it. I've earned this. I've, I need to. It, it's, it's sort of. It works as a double edged sword, doesn't it? It works both ways. You can have a bit of fun then and feel you watch your shape dropping in. You'll see yourself. You, you'll build your confidence naturally. And already in the sound of your voice, mate, you're completely, and I speak to you every day, but you know, every, every time we talk, I've, I've have noticed in the last couple of weeks that you've just absolutely rocketed up. And that's clearly, and and what do I always say in, in, in my mental health podcast? I always say, 
exercise, exercise, exercise. I don't do it. I need to do it. And I've been inspired by actually one of, uh, you know, Nelly, old Nelster. Yeah. Um, he went out for a run last night, mate. And he, he and he videoed himself whilst he was doing it. And I was like, fucking hell, I really need to just go out for a jog. I hate running. I, I absolutely oh, despise I, I, running. I, yeah. Oh, I can't stand it. But I just thought... It was the, it was the after effect. He was bollocks while he was doing it, and then he was like, at the end, he was like, "I've just had a cold shower. I'm sat down. My body's nicely aching, but in a good way." And I was like, "I, I do need that endorphin rush." And then I'm listening to you and how positive you are, and I've gone, "The proof's in the pudding." Two of my friends are absolutely smashing out of the park by looking after themselves. Yeah. And for me, that 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 the writing's on the the writing is there. It is there. 110 percent and it's you know the evidence is there in just listening to the sound of you mate it's absolutely amazing and listening to you know nelly yesterday he he wants to lose a stone before he goes on holiday which is he's got a, a goal which is always a good thing to have if you want to lose a bit of weight i think that where i struggle is if i don't have somebody to push me a little bit because normally what happens when i get into the routine of doing fitness and i do weight training normally what happens is I'll have the off day here and there. And when I used to, I used to train religiously um, for about a year with, um, with Kieran and we used to do weight training and I always used to go, there'd be days where I didn't want to go and he would push me and there'd be days he didn't want to go and I'd push him. So we'd always end up going. Um, and it just, it fell off the, it fell off the radar at the start of the pandemic when they closed all the gyms. And I was, at, I was at my, probably my peak when that, when I was hitting the gym quite constantly, I felt amazing. My shoulders were big. I remember going around, people going, fucking hell, look at the size of your arms, because I just absolutely loved it. And recently, I have been massively deflated because I don't feel like I've got my full potential size that I like living with. But I need that motivation. And I'm surrounded at the moment by people that are motivating me, and it's actually inspiring me. And that's like, I don't know, there's no, there's no words really you can put that on... You can't put words to that. It's just absolutely incredible. And listening to your voice here, um, I know that I was sort of amen and ah, and not amen and ah, but I, I nearly had to go and pick my daughter up. But I was like, absolutely not, because I know for a fact by talking to you, um, you'll boost me up. You'll you'll perk me up. And uh, and here we are listening to you and how you've turned things around. I know you weren't, you know, you were a bit sort of sort of pessimistic is the word I'm probably looking for about going over to your new job and apprehensive apprehensive that's the word not pessimistic pessimistic yeah I know what that means you're a bit apprehensive good word well picked up um you're a bit apprehensive and here you are now completely and utterly undoing all of that and just saying no I'm 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 into fitness you're doing shooting coaching you know you're looking at scuba diving sea fishing I know you've had a couple of little uh, you know those things have been cancelled because of covid recently but at the same time, you're actively getting out there, mate, and it's so it's so infectious, mate. To be to be around, uh, that's why I say all the time, surround yourself with the right people. And mate, you I mean, are one I'm of even those people. swimming a couple of times a week. Nah, fuck off, you're what? not. Nah, I don't believe you. <laughs> well, I'm there. I, I, I'm, we're so lucky with the facilities here um, that I mean, there's there's like a, a swimming pool, indoor swimming pool, heated, lovely. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting up, I'm putting my tracksuit on with my flip flops. I'm flippy flopping down to the pool, quick half hour, 45 minutes in there, mate, up and down on the lanes. And yet again, absolutely fantastic. And I tell you another thing that I've done. Yep. So we as blokes, I'm going to put it out there and I'm going to put everyone into this generic, generic bracket, right? Oh, Um, careful. But go on. We... We as blokes go, oh, we'll be all right. For instance, I've, you know me, I've had two injuries that have been play, paining me for months now. Months, yeah. right? Yeah. And of, of course, I'm like, oh, no, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. You know, someone else will need to go to the doctors instead of me. And, uh, you know, I'll just take some painkillers. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. But, mate, it ain't getting any better. My back and my shoulder. So for those of you who don't know, I, uh, I went skiing at the beginning of the year and I, I really hurt myself. Um, I dislocated my shoulder and, I, and I, I, I must have landed on my tailbone. Like, you know, your coccyx, right? Oh, Jesus. And, yeah, go on. And I didn't realise it at the time, probably because the shoulder was hurting so much, that my back was, uh, it's the same happened to it, right? And then I realised it when I went on holiday and I went on a uh, like a long haul flight. And oh my god, 
getting off that plane from being in the, the seat, seated position, I was in agony, mate. And it's got to a stage. I never thought I'd say to myself, I hate sitting down for long periods of time, right? But yep. now, when, when I do, right, not only is my bloody tailbone, my arse hurting me, right, when I stand up, but yep. my shoulder, because it's, I'm, I'm always like slumped, sh- uh, what's the word, slumped over. Slumped my over, shoulder yeah, yeah. starts to bloody, uh, it starts hurting as well. It's almost like it's ready to pop out again. So anyway, so this week I went, I've got, I've got to do it. And I went to a doctor's and I booked a doctor's appointment. So, um, yet again, another thing that you, that we put off. That yeah, I'm now mate, going- I, I have an exactly similar story. You know that I've been dealing with my back for absolutely, mine's been, well, it's been going on since I had the car crashes. And I've just been ignoring it. I've just been taking pain clears. I was on uh, cocodamol for three years, eight a day, just literally went, I'm not going to go to the doctors. There's nothing they can do. I bit the bullet and I said to the doctor, I phoned him up and said, mate, they don't see you now, do they? It's all done via phone now. Um, and my doctor Kay knows me. And, and this was like two weeks ago. Do you remember I said to you, I was going, I had that really bad back and I went to the, C- I went for an x-ray and CT scan. Yeah. Well, I've been referred to an osteopath, mate, because there's severe, there, there's severe spinal injury at the moment between my neck or C5 and C9 is it is almost the letter even says we've, we're rushing you in you've got to be in in three weeks that's that uh, we've we've put an emergency appointment on you because you're probably going to need surgery and exactly the same thing as you mate i've been sat here i've been like because i work from home as well now so i sit down all day i'm like i don't even move i literally just get up for a drink come straight back down again because i'm not walking around corridors i'm not seeing anybody i'm just sat on my fucking carcass because I'm not going to the gym and I was sat there and I, and I literally crippled me. And I was like, I can't fucking do this anymore. I got to the point where I was like, I cannot physically live in this pain anymore. And straight away, exactly that, mate. The doctor is, he, he literally said to me via text, he said, James, I'm not even going to explain the scans to you and the CT scans. I've done an instant emergency referral to the osteopath. And I went, okay, thank you. <laughs> that was it. Think, mate, that's all it takes, isn't it? It takes like a couple of minutes just to... Do it, and, you, and and they go. Actually, mate, you you know you, you are you're injured. Do you and know that's what, I mean? what he said. That's basically what he said. He basically said to me, mate, um, looking at your um, looking at the scans, the CT scans. All I can say is I don't know how you're living with it. It's all like my spine's twisted. I've got a huge lump on the top of my neck, which I know has been there, and I've I've even acknowledged it's there, and it's pulling all the muscles in my neck, so I get migraines all day, every day, it's to the point where it, it's. At the moment, recently, because I don't want to take Coca-Cola, I'm just sat here being an absolute fucking pain in the ass. I'm, I'm fucking drinking gin every night, a couple of glasses, just to go to sleep because I just want a decent night's sleep. Because for like five, five, six weeks, I've been an absolute clip, and we sit here and endure it as men, don't we? It, like yeah, you just yeah. said there, we just sit there and go, don't worry about it. Someone else needs to get this problem. I, my dad's exactly the same. He he sat there to give you another idea of what men are like. He he sat there with the signs for cancer, was passing blood and all sorts, and literally went, "Nah, it'll be all right." <laughs> he went down for gout. They did a fucking blood test on him and said, "Mate, you've got cancer." And I was like, "Did you know about it?" He, and he said, "Well, I saw the signs, but I just put it down to it'll be all right." I was like, right. "What the? F- what? Do, why do men do this?" Because oh, we're dickheads, mate. Because we're dickheads, and and we're and as we had the conversation before, and I think it was on a live before. Yeah, um, we, we're dickheads because we are the blokes. We're the providers. We're the we're expected to be strong and healthy and on yeah. top of the on top of the tree all the time. Do you know what I mean? We we're, we're the we're the the lumberjacks that go out and chop the trees down. Yeah, you know I mean we don't. It was we, like, yeah, go on, mate. No, but we're you know we're just expected to do to be all right. We're expected to be be okay all the we, time. Exactly. You just get you get on with it. And like I was in a I was a, I was in a bit of a shit state last week, and I think it was just a culmination of like tiredness. I'd been dealing with the pain for a long fucking time. Stress at work. I'd I'd spent a week in London when I don't fucking like being around too many people as it is. And uh, it had all it had all amalgamated into one. And I remember sitting there on on um, this was on a Sunday, and I I, I had a bit of a, a two and eight. I was sat with my missus, and she went for a um, no Saturday night. She went for a sports massage, and uh, she said to me, she was in it was in, she was in pain, but she said I haven't really got a lot of spare cash. And I was like, okay, well, how much how much is it? And I paid fifty quid. 
just to help her to go and get a sports massage because I didn't want her in pain, even though I'd been sat in pain for years and real, you know, and I'd been sat in pain for the last five weeks in like crippling pain. And then she was sat there and I was led on the sofa and she was telling me, she was like, oh yeah, basically I saw the sports masseuse and he's like worked on my quads and he said that that's like why the bottom of my back's hurt and he's worked on my shoulder and started going into it. And I looked at her and I went, you fucking selfish cow. <laughs> and and yeah, even yeah. though I pushed her into it, even though I told her to do it, by listening to how she felt amazing, and I was sat there in crippling agony, I couldn't get comfortable, I couldn't sit down. To lie down, I have to I have to lie in a certain position. I have to go to bed with a pillow under my legs to raise my fucking, um, raise the, elevate the spine. And I've got this special orthopedic pillow, and I'm looking at her going, I've spent all this money to try and sleep well. You've had a sports massage, massage and you're fucking fine. And I'm looking at her going, and I just went up and I, I said, I don't want to fucking hear it. And I, and because I was in pain, I absolutely took it out and I shouldn't have done. And I, and I said in my, in my podcast, I, you know, I shouldn't have done that. But, it, but it was because I just ignored it. If I'd have gone to the doctors like months ago, or when this had happened, I could have been, I would have already seen an orthopedic um, doctor, and I probably would have been having the motion moving forward to get myself sorted. Yeah. But. Yeah. We do it, don't we? Like, like, like you said, is we ex, we are expected to carry on working, carry on providing. You know, even when I was off with COVID, my boss was ringing me up to go. You know, can you can you go in and can you answer these questions? And I was hanging out my ass, and you you get up and do it. You just like you know, you walk home, you're in agony, and your kids like earlier on. I'm I just want to sit down and relax. I've had the day off, but I've worked this morning. And I shouldn't have done, but I'm trying to catch up. And then my daughter's like stuck in this other town. And she's like, can you come and pick me up? I'm just like, you're never ending. You're just constantly on the go. You never get that chance to fully relax. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and you were going to talk, talk to me about a story as well. You had a story. Oh, here she is. Angie's back on. Is she back on? Angie's back. And she's back. She's come to hear the banter. Hey, you two. Here she is. <laughs> she just keeps coming back for more bants. Anyway, I have, for the I banter. Have got I've got a story, right? Yep. And this is one of these. Uh, this is one of these stories, mate. Where wouldn't have happened if I didn't make the effort, right? Okay. So. So this new job I've got, right? Is I'm I'm in a new place, right? And I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out who the key players are, who my people are that I go to to solve problems, who the people are that I go to to help me with issues, who the people are that run stuff and organise stuff and and do all this stuff, right? So there is a uh, what was told to me an allotment, right? right. They said there's an there's an allotment here. My brother's got one of them. Yeah, I know he has. Yeah, and he's he's smashing it out. But that's just his allotment, isn't it? Right? Yeah. yeah. This is like a, this is like a. It was sold to me as it's just a shared allotment. You go down there, you know, put some seeds in the ground, and you grow some vegetables, and that's it. But you know, there's no people can steal them if they want, or people could do this. And, you know, right. Anyway, so I popped up there, and I saw I, I drove past it actually, and I saw a car there. I thought I'll pop up there and I'll have a little word, see who's up there and what it's all about. Not that I'm into, so just to clarify, I'm not into God, I'm not green fingered or anything like that, mate. I am, you know, very much amateur. I, I, I tried to grow, grow a sunflower once and it didn't even grow, you know what I mean? And even little kids can grow them. <laughs> so anyway, I know. So anyway, right, so I went up there, I seen this woman up there and I said, hello. And she said, she said, oh yeah. I said, uh, I'm a uh, I'm new guy here. I said, uh, I just wanted to find out a little bit more about what, what, what this is. And and first of all, the um, the place was immaculate. Yeah, you know I mean, there was these like raised, big raised wooden planting beds made out of like railroad sleepers, nice. all everywhere. Massive, big um, one of them like greenhouse tunnels. I'm talking massive, like you could get fifty people in there. Do you know what I mean? Wow, that was, that was full of all vegetables and that. There's a shed there. There's a like, couple of picnic benches there. I mean, it was it, it, beautiful, mate. Right, and it's all fenced off. It's all fenced around it. Um, so, you know, no animals can get in to eat the veggies or anything like Apart that. Apart from right? you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in there, like, munching on onions and tomatoes. Anyway, I sat down and spoke to her, and I, and, and I introduced myself, and she introduced herself, and, and I said, um, uh, so, you know, so what's it's all about? And she 
this woman, lovely, lovely woman, Deborah. I ended up speaking to her for about four hours, four or five hours, mate, right? Wow. She, <laughs> she is a horticultural therapist. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah, I know, mate. And I was like, well, you're going to have to tell me a little bit more. So anyway, she basically said about these programs that, um, that she runs um, for people that might be having, you know, problems, um, they might be a bit stressed. They might not be getting on um, with, you know, their friends or their families, stuff like that. Uh, or, or they might just be absolutely fucking depressed and pissed off because they haven't got a release. They haven't got a hobby. They haven't got yep. something to do. Um, so what she does is she just, she, she, well, she's a therapist. So she, she listens for a start, right? She listens and she was a good listener as well as a good talker, but that's another subject. The uh, she she was listening to me and I'm chatting to me um, about all of the people that uh, you know she's helped uh, and and what she kind of does and that. And I was like, right, okay, well, I'm interested in this. And she's a veteran herself. Uh, she's a oh, okay. you know, a veteran. So yet again, uh, for the, for these for some of these guys, these soldiers, instantly because she's a veteran, you can relate because she's yeah, of course. She was blown up uh, in a in a, a bomb blast um, many years ago, uh, and had other stuff happen to her. And and um, she was just you know you know her story is amazing. Anyway, she was just a, a lovely one of woman. Anyway, she was telling me she was saying like let me let me go through some of the stuff that we do right. And I said all right. So she says right. I'm gonna just. Have you ever planted stuff before? I said, I've done it a little bit before. She says, I'm going to go through some of the stuff and you're going to plant some, um, like, beans. So uh, Sorry, some be some peas. I said, all right, peas, no worries. She said, but first of all, we know that peas grow on a vine or, or the plants grow quite tall, so we need to support and we can relate this to our lives. And there are five pillars of this support, right? And she said, she said, so... This is amazing. We're gonna we're gonna go and we're gonna look for five supports sticks, right? You're gonna choose them, uh, and then we're gonna label them with with what we are, what the five pillars are. So of course, it. She goes, let's go and let's go and look for some sticks. So as we're walking around, we're talking about stuff, and we, you know, the experiences we've had in our lives and stuff like that. And uh, and then she says, she says, well, I want you to also think of a color, and I and I went. What do you mean? Think of a colour. She says, any colour you want. And I said, all right, blue. And she said, right, we are going to find all of the blue things in nature just for the next 10 minutes. And we're just going to have a little talk about them and that. And I was like, what? All right, yeah. But then, mate, my mind was just so focused on these blue things. So I found like a blue flower and a, a blue bit of wood and a, do you know what I mean? Like, oh mate, I, you've absolutely captured me here, mate. This is amazing. I found a blue insect, a little blue dragonfly. He was cutting about, right? And, and so, <laughs> so for 10 minutes, we're talking about blue, right? So already yeah. she's, she's integrated this almost like mindfulness. Do you know what I mean? The right here, the right now, nothing else matters. Yeah, all yep. that matters right now is what is blue. You tell me what is blue. See what we can find that is blue. Blah blah. Anyway, so we've done that for about ten minutes. Then she says, "Right, okay, we're going to find these sticks now. The, it's up to you what you how you want them. You can have them natural. You can have them, you know, straight. You can have them brown. You can have them stripped back off bark and stuff like that, right? And of course, the, the military kicked in kicked in at me and said, "Well, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna just get any stick, mate. I'm gonna find five of the straightest." most straightest, you know, strongest <laughs> that are exactly the same size and from exactly the same tree and I don't want any differences blah 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 so yet yeah, again mate I'm looking for these these sticks right which are eventually going to be the supports and I'm finding one and she's going oh you know what do you think about that one and I'm like yeah it's all right she said do you think it's the right height do you think it has what it need what you need for it, to, for it to be a good support do you know what I mean and we're already and we're, you can hear mate we're relating back to these things in life that we've got like you say about your friends yeah yeah you've got a load of them because you thought they were support but they weren't because they, they weren't were shit right standard they were <laughs> shit mate they, would have they were shit they fell apart the wankers exactly <laughs> mate right so we're looking for these fucking uh sticks and that and these supports anyway we get these sticks and then we go back right 
And then she says, OK, so we've got our five supports and we'll talk about them in a minute. And I'm going to embarrass myself in a bit because I can't remember the five supports. That's why I had to write on them. I, write, I put the sticks on them to write on them. Right. Um, anyway, she says, right, OK, what do we need now? I said, I said, uh, uh, soil. She said, yeah, we do need soil. But first of all, we need drainage. So you've got to go and I want you to find some some rocks. Right. So yet yeah, again, mate, military head kicks in. Well, I'm not just going to find any old rocks. I want to find the same rocks at the same size and potentially the same shape. And I want them all the same color to put into the bottom of my plant pot so that I've got drainage. I've got the correct drainage. I don't want to mess about with any drainage, mate. I want the right stuff. So as we're going around looking for these rocks, we're talking more. We get, you know, we're, we're just, I'm just talking to her about stuff that I like doing. And she's talking to me about stuff that she likes doing and, and, um, and, you know, various stories. Anyway, get the rocks. And then she's like, right, soil. This is what we need to do put the soil in and then she showed me a nifty little trick about how to plant almost ready growing plants right so we planted these put the soil in put these little five little pea plants in and then yeah. we put the supports in right we put the supports in we labeled them up so oh, i'm going to try and remember them so one was learning a new skill that's one of your supports right learning a new skill because we all yeah. need to have like a hobby or a release or something so learning a new skill is definitely one yeah. Um, the other one is uh, the, the other f- four. I'm trying to think of what they bloody are. I think. Um, oh God, it's it's just escaped me. But but let, let's just say let's just say then right. So definitely, it's learning a new skill is definitely one of them, right? Then another one is well being. Then another one is uh, being active, right? So yet again, I'm looking at support and I'm going active. Well. I should probably start going down the gym. So I've been starting going down the gym and doing the PT, yeah, going yeah, swimming, yeah. getting out. And then there was another couple of two, right? But I labelled them all up and, and we spoke about each one of them. And, and this is where she related it to life and the people around you and your things that you do and and, and all that stuff. And I'll, I'll send you a picture so that when this gets published, you could probably put a picture of this. this, this Absolutely. Support. Absolutely. I need that. Yep. Right. Um, so anyway, then she goes, then she goes, okay, so what what good are these supports if they're on their own and i was like well i suppose they're good in their own right and she says yeah but they need they need each other to support each other to hold that structure correctly we yeah. relate that back to life you need them all to integrate in order to yeah. be successful and happy so she says so now what we've got to do is we've got to secure them all together she showed me some little nifty little knots mate and i'm tying it together the structure is now solid and then she says when as as our uh, as the peas grow, they're going to need um, you know to be even uh, more supported. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some little string around these supports yeah. to yeah. intertwine in the things, and then I'm kicked in again. I don't just want to put the string willy nilly. I want it at exactly the same height, exactly the same place on each stick, with exactly the same knot and the same tension, and I put it round. And then she says, "Well, put another." It up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then another layer and another layer and another layer, right? And she was saying, look, as this grows, as this grows, you see that you've got the support structures all around it, right, that are supporting this this thing, this little pea plant growing in life, which we can relate to ourselves. That's that's us. The pea plant is us. We want to yeah, grow. Yeah, yeah. It's a flush, right? Um, but we, we can't – the pea plant can't do it on its own, mate, because it has to have – the correct drainage, right? So it yeah. has to have the correct fucking shit that, you know, fuck the shit off, right? It has to have the correct uh, soil level and stuff. That's us getting the right types of food, not drinking too much. If you overwater them, they're going to they're gonna die. They're you gonna can't die. Over- so don't yep. fucking drink too much, as in don't drink too much booze. Yep. Um, soil itself is giving the food and the nutrients we've got. And these five pillars, which have... Uh, these five uh, little labels on that I'll send it to you. When when I go out each day and I give them a little bit of water, I look at each pillar and I and and I say, oh yeah, another one of them is giving, right? Giving me. Right. So it's not. It doesn't necessarily have to be financially giving. What it could be is giving your time. Advice. Support. Advice. Yeah, support. Uh, you, you know, giving giving your f- spare time to go and whatever mate whatever you yeah. can give you should give and you know and look around for those other people that are giving 
because it's a fantastic trait to have. So anyway, we go around and look at these these supports as you're watering and you go, what have I done today that's that's you know that's related to that support? Have I learned a new skill? Well, clearly I have because my peas are growing. Have I gave today? Yeah, I gave my time, I gave my professional opinion, I gave my information and my knowledge bank to certain people. Have I you know, done this and done this and done this. And that's what the, the whole pea plant is about growing, mate. And for four or five hours, I mean, there was other stuff that we, we went through, obviously work related stuff and, and some um, veterans uh, support programs that are out there that are absolutely fantastic. Maybe we could talk about them on a different, uh, different potty. Um, but yeah. like I say, mate, I, I, I walked away from there. Um, absolutely refreshed. And you know what, mate? Everything, and I mean absolutely everything that you have said there is like a snippet of what I've absolutely been nurturing, absolutely been talking about over the last six months. Getting rid of the negativity, having that support group, people that are willing to look after you, having those five pillars is exactly, it's, it's about looking at what's around you, making sure you've got the right friends that are looking after you, nurturing you, supporting you. It's invaluable. What you've just done there is, I mean, it's, it's beautiful because it's so relatable. And it's like my brother, for instance, you know, he's got his own allotment and he absolutely loves it because he does exactly that. He gets to go up there. He gets to get peace and quiet. He watches, he nurtures the plants growing. He... He develops them. He adds where they're going. So he gets his well-being. He gets he gets time to himself. He shows off his his you know his what he's done, what he's grown. I mean, he showed me a photo the other day of what he's grown, and he's like, "These are my carrots. I've just made Sunday roast out of everything I've grown." And I'm like, "Fucking awesome, mate!" Yeah. And then, yeah. I mean, I I can't. I'm not I'm not great at growing like veg and all that sort of stuff. So for me, I relate to it in my garden. So I've made my garden a sanctuary of green. And it's just literally like bushes, flowers, green. And I watch them grow. And I absolutely, it really does take you away. It gives you that well-being. And what you've just said there is absolutely incredible. I mean, I didn't even know there was, a, there was anything called horticulturist therapist. I mean, but what you, even just the way you started it, where you, you hit the nail on the head with regards to blocking everything out and, and living in the moment. And that's very much what you've done there. What my brother does, what I do is you go out, you enjoy what you're nurturing and you live in the moment. You forget all about the shit of work or the shit of life and you remove the negativity and you just enjoy the, the you just enjoy the, the work, where you are, the here and now. Oh, mate. And it was, and you know, it was lovely, lovely weather. It was just, it was just a lovely experience, right? But yep. although we can, re- and, and the way she done it was just fantastic. We could relate, you know, everything I was doing, we could all, we could relate to life. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and like yep. I was just trying to explain to you there, you know, the support, and getting rid of the dross. And she even said, I mean, she even said like, right, we want our peas to grow up, right, real nice and tall and good. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to clip these little, these little leaves, right? There was these little buds that were growing. She said, "If you, if you, because she knows what she's talking about." She says, "If you don't get rid of them, she says, what will happen is it, it will all branch off into different bits, and the peas that we get won't be as good." And straight away in my head, mate, I went, "That's that's what we need to do. Get rid of the fucking dross in our yeah, life. Absolutely. These people, these people that are fucking just draining us of all our fucking happiness because all they do is fucking moan." And don't do fuck all about it, and and they tell and they just look at you because that they want you to be fucking unhappy, and they're they're feasting off your fucking unhappiness, which is what these oh. little buds are doing. They're they're not letting this fucking pea plant grow to its full potential because they want it to fucking not grow at all. They they're going to spread it out. So get fucking rid of them little buds that are pissing them off. Yeah, and grow tall. I but, have, and I yeah, go on. Go on. Thing is, right? So it, it, you know, not everyone's into fucking gardening. I know I've, I'm, I'm not, but I kind of am. I'm right? not. <laughs> but it can be anything, and this is why it really bloody frustrates me when I hear you go, "Oh, got my fishing kit out the other day, and oh, I couldn't be bothered to go. Didn't go. 
oh, I looked, I looked at my bloody wakeboard helmets that I've professionally bloody sprayed up, and I used to do backflips and somersaults off the fucking boards and stuff like that, and I can't go because of my back. Oh, I was going to go and do this, but I didn't do it. So it doesn't it matter. What, it, mate, it annoys me because it doesn't matter what the activity is. Uh, you know, and, and for me, you know, my other passion is is clay target shooting. So yep. I went shooting on Tuesday um, with my mate Al, and and you know, for that for those couple of hours that I was on the range, nothing else fucking mattered. I know because all, all that I was concentrating on. Right here we go. So guns out. What's the what's the fucking target doing? I want to see where the target's coming from. I want to see where I want to break the target. I want to see where the target ends up. I want to know how fast it's going, what direction it's going, what it's doing while it's in the air. Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it staying, you know, across? What's the speed doing? And I'm thinking about that. Then I step up to the plate. Right. Think about my feet. You know, all the stuff that I told you when we were when we went shooting. Yep. Think about the body angle. Then you're going to mount the gun. You need to have your cheek down hard on the, you know, on the stock. You want to have your eye in line with the with the rail that's going down. Don't be looking at the bead. Right before that, I want to put my cartridges in. But because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, I'm going to make sure that the writing of the cartridges is all the fucking same way up. I don't want them wonky because I think it might make Affect my shot. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Then I'll close the gun. I'll listen to the click. I'll check the selection lever. Make sure that I'm firing whatever barrel I want to fire first. I look down the barrels and I know what chokes I've got in. And then I look and then I mount the gun. And, I'll, and, and then the final bit, when I call pull, whether I hit the fucking clay or not, the process starts all over again. But you, and you're and you're living in. And do you know what, mate? I I get absolutely frustrated with myself, and I know why. Part of the reason why I don't do it is because I absolutely love doing things with other people. And and unfortunately, with wakeboarding, you can do it, but it's a single man sport. It's it's not. You can do the team aspect when you're talking and having a bit of banter, but it's a yeah. very difficult sport to do. As in, like you know, to get into it. And I've been along with friends fishing very easy. But I just, at the moment, I, I, I get annoyed with myself, about uh, frustrated with myself, because just listening to you there, that's why we do hobbies. We absolutely do hobbies to take our mind off of all this shit and dross that's going on in life. And we do these hobbies to, to be able to live in the moment, forget about all the shit and have fun. And one of the things I haven't been doing lately is having the fun aspect. And like I say, I went out on my motorbike the other day to absolutely try and have some fun. And because I wasn't in that frame of mind, I just didn't enjoy it. It was a, it was a massive negative. But I need to grasp, I need to get that back. And I'll be, and I'll be brutally honest, when I went fucking shooting with you, mate, even though I turned up late, and we'll, we'll keep dropping that in there. When I turned yeah, up late, but, but, at the, I, know, I, know. I know, but, but at the time, mate, at the time when we were walking and the fucking rain started and I was worried about your gun going, oh, fuck, it's going to get wet. Will it rust? All this sort of <laughs> shit. I was sat there. But do you know what? When, when you fucking, when I put those fucking cartridges in and I, and I fucking went pull and I hit that target because I'm fucking obviously naturally gifted at this sport. Um, <laughs> sorry, mate. Wait for it. did <laughs> it. <laughs> but the thing is, I absolutely loved it, mate. I loved being coaching. And I, I will honestly say, and hand on heart, that is the only time in the last six months that I, for the, that I actually didn't think about work, life, money, family, whatever. I just lived in the moment. And even going back to your house when we were drinking the worst fucking drink in the world, I enjoyed it, mate. The whole day, I didn't think about anything. I just literally was like, I was so on a buzz, so on a high from you know, enjoying the shooting, that just talking to you just underpins and reinforces that for me. And it's like, as you rightly said, you know, we, we're surrounded by so much fucking negativity. And I did a little motivational minute the other day, actually, where um, I, I tried to put that into a context for people. And I was saying, if you heard a joke from one person in a room and he said a joke and it was funny, you'd all laugh. If he said the joke again a couple of minutes later you would all smile, or a couple of people would smile. If he said the joke a third time in the same room a couple of minutes later, you would all look at him like he's a fucking idiot. So there's no difference, and that's relatable to life when people moan. If somebody keeps moaning to you over and over again, why do you sit there and listen to it? 
because it's not fucking funny. It's not fucking good. Just get rid of the negativity and go for, do you know what, mate? You are, you are draining me. And it's, it's important to get rid of that negativity and hold on to the people like yourself who take you out there, take you away from fucking reality and have fun in life. Otherwise, at the moment, I'm just fucking living to work. Because that's all I do is I work, sleep, work, sleep, work, sleep, weekend, do fuck all. And that's my fault. That is absolutely my fault. And listening to you is, is, is inspirational because in, this is why we always talk about nurturing ourselves and the five pillars of support, having the right people around us to push us. And it's like it was only that Sunday you said, James, and I, and I, I commend your honesty and, and we need honest friends in this life. You were like... Dude, I, I can't keep listening to you like this, mate. You, you, you've got the fucking tools to go out there and enjoy yourself. You've got the weightboard. You've got the fishing gear. You've got the motorbike. You've got these things. I can't stand here and listen to you fucking say that you've got nothing when you fucking have. And I go, you're right. You're absolutely right. What is to stop me from pushing myself? What is to stop me from going out there? And I can come on here and pipe all day long saying you should be doing this, you should be doing this, when I'm not doing it myself. That's a, what a fucking hypocrite. And you've just underpinned and reinforced that. Well, uh, oh, mate, and i tell you another thing that I'm doing tonight. Go on. Bingo. <laughs> Two fat ladies, 88. Can't Two say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're going to that at seven, aren't you, mate? <laughs> mate, do you know so, what, though? I, I went to bingo about a year, well, about a year ago, I went with the with the when I was at my last rock, my last job with a group of friends, and do you know what, mate? It was fucking competitive and hilarious. Oh, mate, honestly, it, and, and but this is the thing, this is the thing, mate. Right, let, let's forget about oh, the activity. By the way, mate. just let me. We are talking about bingo, by the way. Yeah, like we'll, we'll carry on, but what the fuck? Go on. <laughs> Get about the activity. What I'm challenging myself to do, mate. Is go to the uh, go to everything, do everything, try everything out. Go to the fucking opening of a letter for fuck's sake. Do you know what I, I mean? Love just, this. I love just, this. I'm trying to do stuff, uh, you know, to just to just keep me keep doing stuff. Really, just to keep me active. Do you know what I mean? It's um, well, you, you, you might also find you might find something that you never. And this is why I say to you: always try and say yes because I'm I'm a I'm I. I need to do more of that because absolutely I need to just fucking put my, you know, ship, ship thought process aside and just go, yes. And like, say, for instance, t tonight I wasn't going to, I'd say yes, my, you know, Kieran, Kieran's coming around later on. And I sa said to him, I chinned him off last week because I was like, I'm not in the fucking mood. And I was an absolute fucking arsehole for that. I should have gone over. And then he said to me, would well, you want me to come over to you? And I was like, oh, yeah, all right then. Uh, you know, and I didn't say it enthusiastically. And even to about two hours ago, he was like, and I still come round about seven, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, go on, mate." And I, but I wasn't fully committed, and I was like, "Just fucking do it, mate." You know, you're gonna have a good time because I can't. I'm getting into this recluse habit, and it's 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 destroying me internally and mentally and physically. Well, mate, and this is the thing, mate. You see, it, it's it's not easy for me to say. It is easy for me to say, actually. It's easy yeah, for me to sit here and go, mate, just fucking go out. Just go and do that, mate. Go, don't be sad. Do you know what I mean, mate? All the fucking cliches that we hear all the fucking time. Man up. Get, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just fucking man up, mate. Don't worry about it. Yeah, put right. a smile on your face. Yeah. <laughs> so it's easy for me to fucking say. Um, and I get it, mate. It is... It, We've spoke about this, you know, offline and that. It fucking cripples you it sometimes. Does. You know, even even the fucking thought of of going somewhere new or somewhere, you know, that you haven't been before with people that you don't know. And you and you I've heard you say it, you go, people that I don't even I probably wouldn't even fucking hang around with. Well, you don't know that yet because I know because I've not I've not never embraced it. Office, <laughs> Had you never walked into my office, mate, you know, and we found that fucking connection and then we just realised that we've got, like, a million things in fucking common. Yeah. You know, I, I might have seen you at a party and, and you might have looked at me and gone, oh, I'm not going to fucking talk to that cunt. Look at him with his shit shirt. <laughs> <shirt. laughs> Look at him with his shirt off and his trousers down the wanker. <laughs> <laughs> What's he fucking drinking? Dragon soup? What the fuck's that? Dragon soup? Why is he doing a helicopter at the fucking bar? <laughs> 
What I don't realise is it's normally me that's doing that. I'm just pissed off that it ain't me. <laughs> and the thing is, you do, you do, and do you know what? The thing is, it's not me. That is not me. I don't say no. I've, I've, when I go to places, and I do, when I genuinely get to the place now, and I, and I have a good time. Like for instance, when I went to Cardiff the other fucking month. I was chatting to everybody, mate. Literally, even with Kieran was there, and he was like, mate, you've just fucking made friends with the whole fucking, like, the whole of Cardiff, basically. I, that's what I'm like. I'm a really friendly person. It's just at the moment, I don't know why, I just seem to, I just seem to regress and just go, to nah, nah, fuck it, I'm going to chin it off. And then I miss massive opportunities, like I have done. And that's what I'm trying to change constantly. And I, and I to be honest with you, I need the honesty, the honesty around me, and that's where you've come in. And like, even you know, Nelly and Kieran, you know, they've all come in. You've all come in and all gone like fucking do 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 do, and helped me out. But you know, you've turned around and you've been brutally honest with me and gone fucking. It, you need to fucking sort this out, mate. And it, the proof's in the pudding, as I said earlier on. Look at you with the exercise. Look at you trying new things. Look at you fucking getting up and about. It's infectious. But that is all encompassed in nurturing the right people around you. And that's exactly what I've done. There's nobody around me that is negative anymore. I've already I've cut people out of my fucking life and gone, nah, I'm not interested because all you do is bitch and moan about life. Fuck off. But the people I've got around me are really positive, willing to do things, but I, I'm, I, what's my excuse to say no? I haven't got an excuse. I'm just being a prick. I'm just not pushing myself out of there. And that's why, I, you know, that's why I've made the effort to jump on a little bit of social media to, to promote this a little bit more because I really enjoy this aspect. And even now, I was, I was tempted to go, I mm, can't really be bothered. I'm gonna, just going to drive to fucking pick up my daughter, come back. I'll probably chin it off because I'm not really. And then here I am, you know, 50 fucking odd minutes in, learning shit, talking, having a fucking great time. There you go, mate. There you go. <laughs> it does work, though, doesn't it? It absolutely yeah. does work, mate. And I think that it's, it's 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 amazing. And that's why I like to. I mean, it's it's fucking always great to fucking have a uh, the banter bilster on the go, anyway. Uh, and and I think that 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 does promote me. It does, and you know, people are coming on and going, "Oh, hi, you two. because it is, a, you know, so fucking hilarious double act, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Give it the fucking big licks, mate. And you're off to bingo anyway, mate. Do you know what I mean? I am, mate. I'm, and, you know, it, and this, <laughs> you, you said earlier, bingo, what the fuck? But listen, it's, it's something to do, mate, because, right? Yeah, cool. So, I could go, so I'm still in work now, right? So I'm just finishing off for the, for the week. So I could go back now and I could sit down on the sofa with a missus, right? And we crack open a bottle of wine or whatever it is. We sit down and we watch a telly, put the Netflix on, what have you, right? Do yep. what we've every fucking every Friday night for the last twenty years, right? We could do that, but yep. then I, I said to her, "I said, hey, fancy a bingo tonight?" She went, "Oh, remember the last time we done bingo?" I went, "Yeah, what a great night." She went, "Yeah, right. Let's. Where is it?" I said, "Oh, it's over there." Blah blah. How much is it? Oh, it's ten quid. Right. Well, let's. Well, yeah, let's go. So yet yeah, again, we, you know, me and my missus. Yeah. We go and do something and it's, you know, it's being together. It's me and her doing something. And there'll be some people there that we wouldn't have met before. We might sit next to them and start chatting to them. They might become lifelong friends. I don't know. Absolutely. Know. Do you know what I mean? It's it's just, I just got to just, just try this stuff. Do you know what I mean? And I'll tell you one thing. I'm, I'm bloody annoyed actually, because I'm away on course um, from next week is it yeah week after next right there's a murder mystery night coming up murder oh mystery. i love them i've never been to one mate and they've and they've put out this invite hey murder mystery it's coming up blah blah send us if you're interested because what we'll do is we'll allocate you a character and you go out or you can you can you know put some different clothes on according to that character you might be fucking i don't know colonel mustard or whatever it is turn up in your tweeds i don't know and i'm gutted i'm missing it so, no, I, so one of my friends, he went to London as a Christmas thing, where it was called a secret murder mystery, right? And yeah. they got their, they got their characters, and and uh, so they were they were all couple characters. Um, they 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 had to go to a secret location that was only released an hour, so they had to go to London, and it was only released an hour before via text message. They turned yeah. up, they didn't know anybody there. They were just given their characters and told to get into character. And absolutely fucking loved it, mate. He said it was one of the best things he'd ever done. 
There you go, mate. And yet again, mate, you're listening, but you're not taking it all on board, laddie boy. No, fucking ram it. (laughs) (laughs) Right then, buddy. I get it, though. I get it. it, 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 it's, it's getting better. It is getting better. The more that I'm being encouraged, the more that I'm being uh, developed, the more that I'm talking about these things and the more, you know, I had a bit of a shock the other week. I don't want to ever do that again. I've been absolutely fantastic for six months because I've been nurturing myself. I am pulling myself forward a little bit more and I am trying. And I think that it's not a case of trying anymore. I don't need to try. I've stopped saying I'm trying. It's I'm doing, I'm doing this. And I'm learning um, different ways of of things I can cope with, things I can't cope with. So I'm absolutely learning these things. So it it is what it is. As long as I've got the right people around me at the moment to absolutely push me and absolutely to make sure that, you know, like I said, promoting it and talking about it is easy, but it's actually doing it. And and, and And I'm very, very thankful to have the people around me that are willing to say, Fucking sort it, mate. Well done. You know, or go out. And then, like, when I do do these things, like I did the other day when I said to you and I jumped onto that podcast after going to a work event, when I met loads of people and had an amazing day, the high that I came back on was incredible. Because oh, I've mate, met you. I've never heard you so happy for ages. You were, I know, you were mate. on top of the world, mate. I literally, I, I, as soon as I came through the door, I didn't even say hi to the family. I came straight back in and jumped straight on the podcast to go, fucking what a day. And that's what I, and do you know what? It's not... It's so easy to forget those. And I talk about these things about promoting positive, like removing the negativity and holding on to positivity. I'm doing the opposite. I'm I'm nurturing negativity again and I'm not holding on to those positive things. And it is when you get out and about and have a, a fucking good time that you feel amazing. And I came back on an absolute high. I almost sounded on the same par as what you did at the start where you were like, poddy, I'm doing this, 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 and this. I've done this. And I was like, fucking hell, mate. That is inspirational. And I, and I, and I felt that. I just haven't embraced it. I haven't carried it on. So I absolutely need to learn. And mental health, like I've said to you, mental health doesn't pick who you are. It doesn't pick when to strike. It just fucking strikes. So, but... But you can control it. Absolutely can control it. And that is what I'm learning to do. I'm developing this because I've got the right people around me. And I haven't had the right people around me. I've always I've always had people around me that have always gone a bit like, no, I'm having a fucking, you know, this, this and this. And, and we all get bad days and we all have good days. Yeah. But you'll have more bad days if you're surrounded by negativity than you will if you're surrounded by positivity. Oh, 100%, mate. 100%. If someone's serving up a shit pizza... Right, yeah. You want to make sure you get the smallest fucking slice of that shit pizza, didn't you? Exactly. Of course you do. You don't want to take no fucking double slice, mate. There's no, no calzone fucking shit pizza going around. You want a little sliver. I know, anything, and you... and I, but I'm not. I'm chewing down on the whole fucking calzone and fucking licking my lips and slurping the plate up, mate. Hey, you're pulling out the fucking sweet corn because you're fucking devouring it. Do you know what I mean? I am. I'm literally, mate. I'm slurping it up. I'm licking the fucking. I'm licking the calzone box, mate. <laughs> so, I've got to stop doing this, mate. But what about, and I know, and this this was, I knew it was going to happen. You know, the other day you done a potty and you went, you know, I just, oh, I don't know what I'm, I don't know what to do. And I'm fishing and golf and going for walks and doing it. And then everyone started going, hey, mate, have you tried this? I, I done it. I went, hey, mate. Everybody about, did. Yeah. What about you fucking going out and fucking doing this, mate? Right. I knew it would happen. But you, you, you mate, have got, to, you, you yourself have got to figure out baby I steps, do. baby steps. Yeah, what what it is, mate? What yeah. it is you want to do, or 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 even not what you want to do, but what could get you into wanting to do? And I was thinking about this the other day, right? Right. I chatted with a lad who who was massively into uh, he's into fucking um, uh, model airplanes, not fucking little air fixes. Well, sometimes little air fixes, but bigger ones, you know, like mold control planes and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was thinking with your expertise in not that you've ever mentioned it in the paint industry and spraying industry mm-hmm. i mean and i know that how, how fucking how much you get into it mate when you when you've got a fucking idea oh, i do what when about, it's arty yeah what about what you know i don't know looking into some kind of like 
a model airplane club and you saying, listen, I'm not a model airplane builder, but I'll tell you what I can do. I'm pretty fucking good at custom fucking spraying things to make them look the bollocks. And it just so happens that I fucking have custom sprayed fucking numerous aircraft all across the world, including for fucking royalty and this that, and the other. And, and get your head into that, mate. I don't know. And that way, you can even choose whether you fucking turn up or whether you get them to send it to you. Uh, and then you do it from home. And then one week, you then go and present it to him. And you present it to the guy and he goes, oh, fucking hell, mate. This is absolutely amazing. And then another guy comes over and, you, and he goes, oh, mate, any chance you can do it? And you meet and then you go for a beer with them. And they end up becoming mates. And you've got a common interest. And you teach a bit of spraying. And, I, I don't know, mate. I'm, I'm just no, going to no, well, that, no, 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 but that, but that's absolutely like that's one of the biggest things I absolutely miss doing is and, I, and what I was when I left the uh, I left the air force and, and I and I stopped painting. One of the biggest things I fucking missed was it was doing custom pieces and what I was actually trying to get into was people were going to give me aircraft panels to spray designs on so they could use them as people's gizzards and all this sort of stuff. I was even supposed to get like um, a, a rare piece off of. Um, off the Concorde, and they wanted me to do something fucking special on it. And I was like, I've got airbrushes, I've got all the fucking skills to pay the fucking bills, to, to paint all day long. But it never came to fruition. So I need to, I think, to take the active role into getting back in. Because I enjoy artwork. I don't enjoy painting fucking canvases. I don't enjoy... I love I love working on aircraft. I absolutely love it. Mate, I, I see your move... on, on the, the stuff that you had in, in your office, mate. And oh, mate. It, it... It was so impressive. I I walked out the first time I seen it. Uh, we know the jerry can and all that stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And all and and the fucking helmets and stuff like that. I walked out and and I said to my mate, I went, he reckons he's done that. Not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> really? That and then and then uh, and then it was only when my mate said he wanted uh, a bit of uh, another bit, that, and I put oh the Apache you. the Apache visor. Yes. And then he come back, and I went, "What the fuck? That is amazing!" So I know Did you're you working. Think, you, you genuinely thought I didn't paint any of this stuff. I thought you were fucking a bit of a Walter Mitty, mate. <laughs> you fucking, you absolute bastard, <laughs> <laughs> mate! I am a fucking amazing painter, and I am gonna be a big-headed bastard about this. Everything I fucking did there was painted by myself. Everything. Yeah, but you've got to remember, mate, the context, right? So I'm yeah, looking at. Yeah. I'm walking in going, all right, lads, uh, just uh, just a quick heads up. Uh, plug sockets, too many of them, one office. And you're like, yep. I don't know exactly what to do about that. You want to form one, two, three, four, five, six, and fill it in and then get back to us. And then we'll put in a safety data sheet for uh, this, blah, blah, blah. And I yep. went, not, not a chance that that lad knows about painting. Not a chance. And it was only once I got to know you that I realised. Yep. You've only done, I don't know, like a few years, I think it was, maybe a couple of months. 20, only, only 21 years and pre- yeah, painted the fucking so Typhoon like Eurofire for like the, the, the fucking Saudi Crown Prince. Yeah, just a couple of little things, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just, you know, some little fucking on-the-side fucking garage jobs. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so so I, I didn't I didn't know how good you were until I found out how fucking good you were, mate. And that <laughs> fluff that me up, mate. Good. Fluff me up. I love it. <laughs> As a talent, mate, that you should never fucking give up. Although I will caveat that with, uh, I said to you, hey mate, any chance uh, with your artwork? Hey mate, any chance you can just turn this picture instead of being a photo? Just you know, do the outlines of it. I've got a little plan for it. Fucking hell, what's that been? Two weeks? Two weeks of mugging me off, mate. I know. And do you know, I don't even know where to fucking start with it, mate. So I need to, I need to sit down and act. I tried to do it and I was in London and I was like, I was trying to fucking do it. And I was like, I don't know where I'm going here. And then it snowballed into fucking stupid sadness, fucking stupid depression. I was like, fucking fuck this. And do you know what? I've got an iPad. It's sat in front of me. iPad Pro sat in front of me with a fucking pen and I'm just going, what the fuck are you doing, James? I've got a laser etcher. I've got a fucking, I've got a thousand pounds worth of airbrush kit that is sat in a box. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, James? And I don't know why. I just, I think it's because, like I said, for me, because I get so invested in it, 
when I go out to do things for people and I go like, oh, you know, I've, I've got this for sale. Everyone goes like, oh, yeah, maybe oh, I want like 30 quid for it. And, you, you you know, you bought the bit of wood for like 20 quid and you put like four hours into it and you're only really making a tenner. You think to yourself, wow, mate, what the fuck? You're, you're moaning over a fucking tenner. So I, and I'm not not in this case, but I do get really it does get me really hard to get motivated. So nine times ten, all of the stuff that you saw in the office was all done because I did it for myself. So I knew it was like freedom, as in like I can just do what I like. When someone says to me, can you do a specific thing? I fucking struggle because I'm like, there's no artist no artist in that. It's just like, can you do this? Whereas I'm like, if you had said to me, James, I, wanted to, I want you to do this because it's going to be like this and I want you to have a little bit of freedom, I'd be like, fucking brilliant, mate. Let's get stuck into it. But when you say, I want this pencil line drawing, and I'm going, I don't even know where to start, mate. And that, that's the motivational aspect that I really struggle with. And, and that's kind of incorporated a little bit into the ADHD because it's hard for me to find that, that fucking, you know, that, that motivation. But when I get that motivation, mate, there's no stopping me. There's absolutely no stopping me. And it's like, if you supplied me with aircraft panels and said, James, I've got the side of a fucking Lynx here, and I, I want you to do something on it, Union Jackie, something British, a little bit, I'd be like, fucking brilliant, leave it with me, I'm going to fucking show you the fucking best bit of artwork you've ever seen, and it's going to be worth about fucking £800. I would do it. Absolutely fucking do it. But and you that's can't what... do a little fucking outline fucking job. <laughs> <laughs> because you're fucking picking on me, I'm going to do it. I promise you I will do it this weekend. I've got a this nice, way. easy weekend. I've got, yeah. a summer ball. I've got a summer ball tomorrow, which is James Bond theme, which oh, I'm looking for. Brilliant, mate. I wish you'd told me before. I've oh, got I'm a golden go um, PPK. Have you? Yeah, a little. And it's a lighter as well, so you can go out into the smoking area, pull it out, and just go, ching, oh, and it's a I'm yeah. going to uh, I'm going to the Wallop Summer Ball, mate. Nice, mate. Nice. That'd be great. Yeah. So I, I'm really like I'm a bit. I was a bit apprehensive about it, but I'm pushing myself. And then tomorrow night, Saturday night, going with me old old dear and me old man. And they've been, I'm, I'm their guests, obviously because I'm not part of it anymore. But I'm their guests, and uh, and yeah, I'm looking forward to the fucking uh, old Yorkie's going to be there and all that. You know. Who are you going as? Odd job. I'm going as <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> I'm going as fucking Jaws, mate. <laughs> I'm going to take a bit of cable with me. And I'm going to fucking chomp down on it. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, mate. Really so, uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. And then Sunday, I'll just have a nice lazy day. I'm driving, so I'm not drinking because I don't need to drink to go to these, but it's nice to get the atmosphere. And, um, yeah, I'm just going to – so Sunday, I'll sit down. I'll have my iPad fully charged, and I'll, and I'll fucking do it for you so that you've got it ready for next week. I think you're looking too much into it, mate. I reckon you could just download an app. It's only because I just did. I, I thought you might have known an app. There's an app, and you just put the picture on, and it will turn it into the, the outline drawing, that, almost like the silhouette that I want. Do you know what I mean? Right, okay. I'll see what I can do. I can see yeah. what I can do. Don't look too much into it, mate. If you can't do it, just be honest and go, look, look Bill, I, you know, with my 20-odd 20, 20 years of painting... Um, you know, <laughs> Fuck off! Fuck off. Fuck you've you've challenged me beyond my limits. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss my ass. <laughs> right, listen, mate, it's been absolutely cracking talk with you and the listeners. I hope you've enjoyed our little chat and remember about the gardening. You'll see in the picture that he puts up with this, that the, the five pillars of this, uh, you know, uh, to, to, towards mental health and what you can, you know, relate them to in your life. Um, over to you, Jimbo. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, say, same rhetoric and, and echo those sentiments, mate. You know, um, here to support mental health, here to build well-being. Um, absolutely fantastic conversation. I look forward to another live potty with uh, Bantaman Bilster here. So uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for joining. Missed us. Sorry you missed us, mate, but please catch us on the next, next one, buddy. And uh, yeah, I look forward to talking to you again, Billy. And Angie. Cheers, Angie. Oh, yeah, and Angie, yeah. Thanks for sharing the podcast. Thanks, everyone, for liking and commenting, building up the uh, structure for everybody. Don't forget to uh, follow along and um, look out for more content. Oh, there's uh, Corey's t turned up as well. Corey's on. Oh, Corey's on, is he? Aren't gentlemen necessary for said conversation? Well, we are gentlemen, Corey. <laughs> we are very much gentlemen. <laughs> All right, buddy. Enjoy your bingo tonight, mate, and I will speak to you over the weekend. Cheers, Ledge. Take care. Cheers, you too, mate. Take care. Bye. Bye.